Thank you for holding on, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again. Good afternoon if you're hearing us from Europe. Good morning to the people uh, from all the American continent. Also welcome if you're listening to our recordings. Our webinar today is Building O&M Strategies in Nascent Markets Around Sophisticated Data Solutions. My name is Marcel Langone, and I will be joined by these three gentlemen, Ben Hansen and Zach Kreifels from SMA and Alexander Wolf from Meteor Control Central America. Brief agenda for today. Uh, first, a short introduction on our webinar and panelists. Uh, shortly after, we'll jump into a couple of presentations focused on monitoring, real-time analytics, predictive analytics, and their importance for creating cost-effective O&M strategies. There will be, of course, time for Q&A, so please uh, feel free to ask questions at any point, and we will end up our webinar in approximately one hour. So, for those of you that don't know Solar Plaza that well, we're a global information platform for solar PV. Our main business is organizing high-level B2B conferences and trade mission over 100 events over the last 14 years. We have a network of over 60,000 uh, solar PV professionals and growing every day. The webinar uh, is also a pre-call to our yearly conference, Solar Asset Management Mexico and Central America. Uh, it's the first conference in Mexico and the region that combines development, finance, and operations of solar PV. From 8 to 10 October in Mexico City, we expect around 200 uh, attendees, more than 40 speakers sharing their knowledge and expertise on stage, and uh, above 15 sponsors and exhibitors at the show. With that, I would like uh, to say here a thank you note for all of our sponsors that make our conferences and content possible, including the speakers of today, SMA and Meteo Control, and uh, the, the companies uh, involved so far in our uh, Mexico event or just a selection are now uh, in screen. You can go to the website and see who's joining us. And also, if you still haven't joined uh, yet, uh, the early bird expires this Friday, 14 September. So don't miss the chance to, to meet with these companies to join us in Mexico. And we have a special pricing until this Friday. Some practical notes uh, before you, we start. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, please use the chat box on your right for questions. Use the question chat box. And don't worry, the presentation slides will be available afterwards. And we'll make sure they get to you. So our first presenter of the day is Alexander Wolf, his general manager for Meteo Control Central America. He leads the operations uh, in the region covering sales, technical support, and independent engineering services. And he has previously worked at Siemens and over 10 years of experience uh, in the renewal energy space. Um, Alex, we're making you presenter and the floor is yours. We can hear you. Good morning, Alex. Good morning. Thank you, Marcel. Um, good morning to uh, all the audience. Um, buenos dias, guten morgen. Um, I just like to start right now. Let's see. Perfect, Alex. You have the the mouse control. Can you scroll down? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Um, just please let me give you a very short introduction of Meteor Control. Um, we are a leading company of independent PV monitoring uh, in the global market. We have about 45,000 PV system uh, with a total of uh, about 13 gigawatt peak controlled by our, monitored by our system. We have more than 40 years of experience uh, in the field. 
um, developed most advanced tool of to measure performance. We accompany uh, uh, like about uh, 30 billion euro projects um, all over the world. Our headquarters is in Augsburg in Germany and we have um, about 150 employees which subsidiaries in uh, 10 locations worldwide. Actually it's uh, right now uh, we just opened Australia so that is uh, going to be 11. In the Americas we have uh, three offices one in the US uh, looking after the US and Canadian market then the other one for Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean and Colombia. Um, that's where I, where I am located and I have the responsibility. And uh, then we have uh, another office in Chile for this part of South, South America. Um, so that I that now you know a little bit about me and about the company. I would like to know a little bit more about you. So could you please bring up the first cool question, Marcel? Yes. So the poll question is uh, on its way. We'll see it in a couple of seconds right now. Perfect. So for the audience, what is your experience in PV monitoring? I have some basic idea. I have been using advanced monitoring system for a while already. I'm a known manager with experience or an asset management with professional experience in monitoring. Let's give it a couple of seconds to vote and see who is on the other side. Okay. okay. <laughs> So uh, almost half of the, the public here have some basic ideas. So perfect also for, for the first introduction, starting with the basics and then we, we scale it up. Though we of course have also some experienced people uh, listening to us today. Okay, that is good to know. Uh, so we are going to uh have a look into some some basics uh, and then uh, go a little bit deeper into the subject. Well, first, uh, I'm sorry, just uh, I go back a second. So uh, what what we are going to to have a look at first uh, data visualization versus professional monitoring. What is the difference? Uh, what uh, can you do with that? Um, portfolio management how we do that from an overview to a deep dive. I'll show you some things there. Then we go short, shortly to KPIs for O&M and asset managers. And at the end, um, a way to optimize the maintenance process from ticket to report. Okay, so let's go to the first one. How is it different um, a basic monitoring system from uh, an advanced uh, monitoring and diagnosis system? Quite a, a few of you um, might know monitoring systems, some basic systems. Uh, you basically have data visualization. You can see how much is generated. You see the inverted data and uh, most of the time you also have somehow some alerts, some, uh, some errors, some alarms. So you can basically see on this uh, simple systems, uh, is, is the installation working, yes or no, and how much is it producing. And uh, that's about it. That is okay for some uh, basic systems uh, for residential 
um, that's enough to know. But uh, as soon as you go into commercial, industrial, or even utility scale, uh, you need uh, a somehow more advanced professional monitoring system. And um, that uh, it's uh, what you see on the, on the second line. In addition to just uh, data visualization and uh, the alarms, um, you get to get specific data from from sensors, weather data, and that uh, enables you to not uh, only visualize the data, but also do um, diagnose and analysis. And, and then you have more than just a monitoring system, but uh, you uh, get diagnosis and you get uh, to, to know more about the, the possibilities um, of your plant. So basically we include sensors. Um, these sensors like pyranometer, weather station, temperature sensors that uh, give us uh, data from the, from the environment and uh, that goes together with all the, the data from the inverter, from uh, string monitoring urine units possibly, um, all this data together um, go into uh, our portal which is called WECOM and then there uh, we have the possibility to do quite a lot of uh, analysis, uh, comparison, diagnosis, uh, evaluation uh, of the of the system. The, the important thing here is um, you use weather data, radiation uh, specifically, um, to compare the, the theoretical data that uh, could be possible um, with the actual data that uh, is the performance of the plant. So it's much more than just uh, compare it to uh, um, some historical data from last year, from last month, um, or forecasts that might come out from a yield report. Um, then uh, this, this is a good uh, comparison as well, but it's, it's a bit short than uh, if you do it this way to include the radiation and you can compare it to the expected power uh, generation so which would be possible and compare that uh, to the actual generation. Okay here you see uh, a curve what what is actually the difference between uh, just some data visualization, you have the blue line, the dark blue line, which is uh, the generation of the, the power generation of the plant. Then you have this uh, light blue area, which um, is the, um, the theoretically possible power generation. And then you have the losses. So here, as you see here in this case, um, that uh, every time there's some loss, uh, something is going on with the plant, and um, so generation could be higher than it actually is. So at midday, there are some, some losses. Um, there, afterwards, you can do a, a more detailed analysis, analysis for that uh, to look where it comes from, but uh, at midday it could be, for example, that uh, the inverter and go into um, um, limitation because of the of the temperature, or could be uh, that uh, it's going to to the limitation of the of the power of the inverter. And at the end of the day, you see losses that is typically shading. Uh, 
so at the beginning and the end of the day, uh, if you see something like that, uh, you probably uh, have some shading on this uh, on this plant. All right. So how how we do we do um, operation and and maintenance of a of a PV plant? Um, the basic idea is to have first an overview to see the whole picture and then if you uh, see something that uh, you have to take care of, you take a deep dive into exactly the point uh, to see what's going on. So this is uh, an example um, of an overview. Um, portfolio management, uh, you have like six, seven plants here in this uh, uh, portfolio. It could be 50, 100, 200, even more. Uh, we have customers uh, who are doing the, like that. So the idea is to have a quick overview. Um, what's going on? Um, for example, there you have a, an orange um, bell on one of the plants, so there's some alarm, uh, some um, something you uh, should take care of, and um, you have a map overview. Um, so it, the, the basic idea is to get uh, to the information in a very limited uh, period of time, just quickly see what's going on, and uh, then take care of the plants um, where there is uh, something to take care about. So if you then go into the plant level, uh, you also have an overview um, with different charts uh, that is highly uh, adaptable to every user. So whatever is uh, more important to the person who's using it, uh, you, you can adapt that. Um, so there you have um, possibilities uh, to do comparison, uh, what I told before, diagnosis, uh, comparison uh, between different plants and uh, look pr uh, first at the, at the plant level, at uh, inverted data, and uh, I'm just quickly showing you one of the, one of the charts that we uh, use quite a lot which is variance analysis. So here you can see the simulation. Um, that's what I mentioned before. We have a theoretical value which is uh, calculated from the irradiation of the plant, takes uh, into account all the um, efficiencies of the inverter, um, all the components which is uh, used in the plant, uh, it's um, it's taking into account here. You might have heard the term a digital twin, so that what is uh, basic that's basically uh, what it is. So you you have uh, the all the data uh, on a digital basis, and then uh, you calculate or well, the system calculates what is uh, the theoretical value and then we compare it to the actual data. Um, and you have green, yellow or red bar here uh, which indicates you um, if it's between 90 or 150 percent it's, it's quite good. If, if it's below 90 it gets yellow, if it's below 70 it gets red. So um, that gives you a, a good idea how the plant is performing. Another example um, where you can get on a very short time a very fast overview of your plant is what we call heat map. And uh, we have uh, doing this for quite some time on the inverter level. So uh, you, you see the all the inverters of one plant um, and now uh, what's it's quite new is that we also do that on on string level so um, you can even see 
the data of every string of uh, of each inverter of the plant. So, to uh, the ones of you that are rather new to this um, to this analysis and diagnosis, um, and just explain it very short. You uh, see from the morning uh, to the afternoon um, um, the the time on 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 the on the bottom, and then you see all the the inverter or here even the strings on the left side. So you have um, some horizontal lines like this one. So in this case, this inverter has some issue because it's not producing. The, the darker the, the color is, the less it is producing, the lighter the, the, the more, more it is producing. So this inverter here, and the one on the bottom, they do have some issue. So that's where you you should have a, a look into. Um, and then the, you see in the morning, like um, one some of the strings uh, start late, so that could be uh, shading. And on the other hand, you have uh, vertical lines like like this one here that is uh, just climate uh, whether there is um, might be coming a thunderstorms you uh, get some clouds um, so every inverter of the whole plant uh, gets uh, the, the the same reduction of the power so uh, that is quite normal that is nothing to wear uh, to worry about where you should worry about are the horizontal lines okay so, switch over to the KPIs. Um, KPIs we have for the O&M manager. Um, there are a lot more uh, KPIs possible, but uh, I just point, point out the most important one. Um, so, a specific yield that compares the total energy generated um, of a certain kilowatt uh, peak installation installed at, at a certain period of time. So you compare the, the um, actual generation with the installed power. Another one is performance ratio. That is uh, the ratio between the actual specific yield and the theoretically possible reference yield. Perfect, Alex. So I believe that we have already, yeah, with the data visualization, with how to look for KPIs, I believe we have a poll question. And actually, yeah, after the poll questions, we have only five minutes uh, to round up the presentation. So okay. we can go on a, on a little faster pace on this. So okay, I'll I, I, I speed up a little bit. Uh, just uh, uh, let me point out the other the other three, and then we go to the pool question. So uh, other one is system availability, which is um, the uptime of the of the plant, but with certain contractual um, factors. Uh, so um, there might be some sometimes excluded from that. Um, the other one is data availability. Here uh, we talk about uh, how good you, the data is uh, getting to the plant, the, how good is the internet connection, how uh, there are no gaps uh, of lost data some, somehow. And uh, the last one, the urban alarms, it's quite self-explaining, so um, how much time you have uh, open, open alarms in the, uh, in the system. So, could you bring up the pool quest, the, the, the pool question? Yes. Perfect. So we have it here on the screen. And uh, one of these KPIs that Alex just described is the most important for O&M. Let's just give a couple of seconds for that and um, comment on the results. Okay, 
uh, I believe we can see the results. Alex, is that surprising? Is that what you expected? Is this the most important KPI? System availability um, for um, for s some uh, of the O and M companies, system availability is quite uh, important, and the other important one is performance ratio. Uh, so here it, ten it depends a little bit if uh, the same uh, company, the same EPC company, uh, is doing uh, the O and M, or if it's uh, a different uh, O and M uh, provider. So if we have a look at the overall performance of the plant that would be a performance ratio but if we only look at the O&M side uh, the, the O&M provider uh, can uh, a lot of time not be um, responsible for the uh, for what the EPC company uh, was doing before uh, so in this, ca in this uh, case it would be system availability uh, and um, so that's uh, that's quite uh, quite a good thing here. Okay, so if we have a look, yeah. So I speed it up a little bit. Uh, KPIs for asset manager. So as a, the the asset manager, the the focus is a little bit different than, than from the OMN, but. Uh, uh, you uh, look at two processing time uh, of the maintenance, so basically controlling the O and M uh, provider, the reaction time of the operator. If there's an alarm, how long it takes um, to get it uh, to get it done. Uh, also, invested time per asset per plant. So if you have a uh, the different plan to have, to do a comparison between that. Uh, there might be some more problematic uh, plans than others. Uh, number of tickets um, as well, you compare that. And for false statistics, what you see on the right. So where are the, the defaults uh, cost, the inverters, the strings, um, etc., the modules cabling. Uh, so, with this fault statistic, you have quite a good idea what are the main issues uh, at this specific plant. So, and to sum it up very quickly, uh, to make the O&M uh, process uh, more efficient, uh, I'll show you how we do the process from ticket to report very quick. Um, you get an, uh, an ticket. You get uh, an alarm uh, at the system, um, and uh, you, from that alarm, you make a ticket. Um, so you can group together several uh, number of alarms. And then, after creating the ticket, uh, you prioritize it. So uh, if it's uh, um, if it's quite important, uh, high, medium, or low. And um, so that um, which one you should uh, take care of uh, first, then uh, you assign it to uh, to a technician, field technician. Um, there, he's able to see that um, the um, ticket on a mobile device, a smartphone, tablet. So he has all the information about what's going on. Um, he goes to the site, um, he has all the information available, he is doing the repair work uh, on site, uh, checking all the things, um, what's going on. And then uh, he's able from the same mobile app uh, to get feedback, he can take photos, he uh, puts in his, uh, his comments and then uh, this uh, goes inside the, the, the same application to the operator in the in the central office. He's uh, looking at the results. Uh, is it done? He closes the ticket. Uh, he can uh, uh, advise to the technician, the field technician, to uh, do something else. Uh, so the, the thing is, it's controlled all in the system. There's no loss of information. 
uh, it's uh, real time, so you you talk to each other, and everything is recorded in in the system. And at the end, uh, they even can uh, generate a report. So for this uh, specific ticket, or also on the monthly report for the different uh, tickets uh, that was uh, going on in this period of time, um, you see uh, what is going on. This uh, to summing it, sum it up, it's a very efficient way to uh, save your time to uh, not lose information and to make the O&M work um, easier and more efficient. That is about it from my side for the moment. Um, I hope that um, gave you quite a good insight uh, and feel free to uh, ask your questions. Thank you, Alex, for your insights. And we will come back to you uh, later for Q&A. So please stay on the line. I would like to remind you before uh, we continue that questions are open. So feel free to make to make questions at any time and we will answer them just after our second presentation. And for that, we have Ben Hansen. He's a senior manager of global O&M service solutions at SMA. He leads project management efforts to design SMA's global O&M solutions. And he has previous experience in construction and technology industries. And he will be joined by, by Zach Kreifels. He's an O&M performance and analytics product manager at SMA. He works with sales and operations to develop price and market new solutions. And he has worked in the past with First Solar and Black and & Veg. And I'll give you now the mouse, give you control. And now the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Marcel and Alex. Thank you very much for your presentation too. It was uh, quite interesting. And, and just want to make one quick note. I do agree with the comment he made about uh, as far as O&M providers go, uh, availability being the key measurement there. We, we do agree with that and subscribe to that philosophy that in, in most cases, performance ratio guarantee is not the most important thing for measuring your O&M provider because often it's not something that they can control directly. Uh, if they happen to be the EPC, then of course that makes sense, more sense at that point. But anyway, thank you, Alex. Very, very interesting uh, presentation. Um, as Marcel noted, uh, my name is Ben Hansen and I lead the product development group for Optum O&M Solutions for SMA. Our group is located here in California um, Zach Kreifels is our product manager for performance and analytics, so he's very focused on the topic at hand that we're discussing today. Um, SMA's Optum O&M group, we have maintenance contracts totaling well over 3.5 gigawatts across the globe. Um, our O&M field service engineers and our technicians are also spread all over Europe, North and South America, and we're also growing in Australia at the, at the moment. Currently, we have two solar monitoring hubs. Uh, our first one is located in Ulm, Germany. Our second is in Rockland, California. And we're always evaluating options for expanding those globally as needed. Uh, one thing to note is our data analytics uh, research and development is taking place at our headquarters in Castle, Germany. So currently, our performance analytics, they're coming from a mix of performance engineers and proprietary software that's developed there in Castle. So we may touch on that a little bit later here. Okay, so for today, what we'll be discussing, uh, number one, using analytics to detect unknown issues. Secondly, using performance analytics to minimize operational expenses. And third, optimizing maintenance schedules to impact profitability. So here's a scenario that I'd like you all to kind of think about, uh, see if this fits uh, your experience either as an owner or as an O&M provider um, or an asset manager. The preventative maintenance was just completed on schedule for your plant or your solar park. From the inspections, everything seems to be working well. Uh, no alarms are going off in the SCADA. 
We've not picked up anything in the IV curve trace that we just did for 25% of the plant, nor in the string monitoring if you have those set up. However, the plant is putting out less power than it should. And the question to be asked is what's going on? So this will move us into our first poll question. I'll wait for Marcel to bring that up. Okay, you will be able to see it just in a few seconds and I will read it for you. So what percentage of your plants have some unknown issue that's what, that was not apparent in the SCADA or initial inspection? So is that less than 10%? Uh, we're looking at 25, 50 or 75 or greater. Let's uh, have a couple of seconds to, to answer and uh, let's see the results. Hopefully it's, uh, it's on the lower end. Okay, let's uh, show the results. Ben, what do what do you have to say about the results? Well, this is this is very interesting. Um, we're looking at forty one percent of the respondents said that less than ten percent of their plants. But then what you realize is that sixty percent approximately of, of the respondents said that more than that, right? More than twenty five percent of their plants had an unknown issue. And this is um, this is very similar. Actually, it's a little bit less so than other markets we've done this in. I know that when we did this recently for Europe, the same poll question in the Americas. And uh, they're finding a little bit more issues later on that were unknown in the initial inspection. So this is really interesting information uh, that we're getting here for you know Latin America and Mexico. So yeah, thank you for that. Let's go ahead and move forward. Um, so we, we need to use analytics to detect unknown issues. Uh, Alex did a great job outlining his solution for us and, and, and what they do to kind of drive to that aspect. And what we'll be talking about is a little bit more of kind of the back end analytics that are happening in this case to get there. In fact, uh, just to Actually, Media Control did a survey, uh, a study uh, several years ago. This is from the New York Times. Um, they did a review of 30,000 installations in Europe and found that up to 80% were underperforming. Now, that, that might be stunning uh, to the people on this webinar, uh, especially given the last poll results we just looked at. Up to 80% were underperforming, and that's something that we want to ask ourselves: is how do we know? How do we understand that this is actually happening? And the thing I'd like to point out is, all plants have some hidden issues. Uh, I guess it just really depends on how big those issues might be, but they all have something. At SMA, we see a lot of those issues that'll show up as an alarm or an error in the inverter. And that doesn't matter uh, where it happens in the plant. A lot of that information tends to flow through the inverter. So that's where it's getting picked up a lot. Um, but some of the more common issues that we're seeing uh, are coming from modules and cabling. And those can be responsible for over 60% of the issues at a plant. So a lot of the things in the DC field are, are a lot of the issues that we see. And those could be things like glass breakage, uh, PID, also bypass diode failures, module disconnects, short circuits, and cell cracking. Um, inverters, however, have a lot, have far fewer issues, but as we all know, uh, if an inverter has an issue, it can have a greater impact because of all that, uh, all the system feeding into the inverter at that point. But Inverters are a great uh, connection point for data on plants, and it's a place that you really want to go to and understand if you want to start to look at the performance of your plants overall. Uh, a lot of the times there are no sensors in the DC field, and even if there are, sometimes what happens is we get too much data, and I've had some pushback on this before when I've said this, but sometimes we're collecting a lot of data, and the problem with it is, is we're not prepared to do anything with it. And that could be that we have too many alarm spots set up. And what that happen, what happens with that is we're not able to see uh, the real problems going on because there's a lot of noise coming in. On the other side of that, another problem that could happen is you don't have any alarms set up at all. And you're, you're missing things that you could be seeing automatically coming out of your system. 
um, and, and the, you know, the, the industry is really starting to move away from this, but even IV curve tracing can only show the percentage of the plant that you inspected. And it's really expensive to do it comprehensively to get a full view of your plant using that method. Uh, we've moved significantly uh, towards visual inspections, aerial thermography. They can give a, a really good view of the entire plant. But one of the restrictions again with those is typically those are only done annually. Uh, and it's really hard to get a, a continuous overview of your plant. However, they are a great benchmarking tool and a great way to find out uh, what a current status of your plant is. So what we know, right, customers and owners, they want accurate analytics. They want to understand and address the issues that are going on in their plant. So many times uh, utility scale plants and especially portfolios, they're presenting too much data to see the smaller patterns that are going on. So we're really, our investors and our owners are really interested in getting good data. Uh, they're much more interested in good calculations and algorithms and methodology, more so than in necessarily what software is used to get it. They want to know that you've got a good, good methodology set up to get to that data. So these, these smart owners and operators, they know that the proper use of big data will improve plant and portfolio performance. It'll improve reliability with less downtime and more energy output. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and transfer over to Zach. He's going to talk a little bit more about data and how important it is to, uh, to understand what you've got coming in and what to do with it. Right, Zach, are you, there you go. All right, thanks, Ben. Take control. All right, so as most of you would expect, the end result of an analytics program is to maximize plant availability and plant output, and also reduce your operational expenses. There are several steps to getting usable insights from your data on the plant. First things first, is data integrity is key in order to accurately see what's happening at the solar plant. If your sensors are uncalibrated or have communication problems, stuck data points, or data dropouts, it's going to affect the quality of your analytics. And bad data leads to inaccurate conclusions, which can lead to poor decisions with your maintenance program. Unfortunately, all systems will have data problems at some point, so it's important to have robust processes in place to make managing it easy and scalable. Some best practices to achieving quality data are making sure you import all of your data records from the sites into a single database with an organized structure and avoid having multiple monitoring solutions. And it is also important to have data backups as well. And doing all this allows for process repeatability and reduces troubleshooting on multiple systems as you scale your, your fleet of sites you operate. The next step is to create some automatic processes to help aid in data recovery and correction if and when data problems occur. These can include filtering out alarms to remove noise and false positive sensor alarms. And it is also important to have automated data recovery and interpolation to correct data that may have been lost, inaccurate, or not transferred due to data problems on the site. Once you have scrubbed your data, the next step is to add some solid statistical analysis techniques to the data you have. First, it's helpful to have access to data specialists with background and getting useful information from the data. And at SMA, we employ several data scientists who really enjoy working on this. As well as using statistical analysis on your data, benchmarking is also a helpful form of analysis. Our data is only helpful in comparison to something similar or within a set of constraints. At a minimum, this should be done at the plant level. For instance, if you benchmark an individual inverter's performance against the nearby inverter's performance, or even against inverters plant-wide. This is an easy way to spot un chronically underperforming inverters at the beginning of your comparative ana analytics. Useful benchmarking can also happen at the portfolio level if you adjust for geographical and weather differences between the sites. 
This is interesting you compare performance to a similar asset and can be helpful to determine if any assets within your fleet are underperforming. You can also take this analysis a step further and benchmark different analysis techniques between sites. For example, soiling percentages at sites nearby, you may notice the drastic difference differences, even though they're only you know, within 50 miles of each other. And this can be due to plant neighbors, such as farms and agriculture, causing additional dust and soiling in the air. So what are we looking for in our analysis? Well, we are looking for anomalies, measurements that might be sitting just outside of the trends or constraints we've set upon our data. Even using just our inverted data, we might be able to find small deviations that could lead to further indications of problems at the stream and even the module level. It's also helpful to benchmark your assets against themselves over time. So more than just detecting new malfunctions, using this analysis or comparing the site's performance over time can also help indicate degradation that might be happening on the site. It can be helpful for acting in time to make warranty claims on assets while they're still under warranty. And other indicators can be tracked as well, such as soiling seasonality compared to rain events historically. You might be thinking, how am I supposed to scale all this analysis for the sites we operate? And the short answer is to create as many automated processes as possible and let the computers do the heavy lifting. It's very cumbersome for a performance engineer to take all the data points and start looking for patterns. And often these issues are buried deep within the data with only slight variations that are challenging to just detect by looking at trends and data points. With automation and smart alarming, we can really reduce the workload. Smart alarms used creating or created using statistical algorithms. Minor deviations can be detected in the data and actionable events can be taken to remediate the effects. So now that we have quality data, some sound statistical analysis and automatic processes, we can achieve even greater intelligence by combining our analysis with other data systems, such as asset management software, ticketing systems, and ticketing systems. A good integration would enable fixes based on experience. The system can learn to associate common solutions required to fix the component or failure on the site, depending on the alarms and fault codes we see. Our tickets can even be automated based on what's critical to address at the time. And over time, alarms can be correlated with specific fixes and actions, so techni technicians can be automatically given work orders with proper maintenance manuals, materials, and tools to fix the problem, reducing troubleshooting and rework time. Oops. All right, now we're ready for our second poll question. Excellent, yes, we have two, two poll questions coming up. Let's see the first one in the screen. Okay, and here we have, so what level of performance analytics does your O&M program use now? Use now? Either you're not sure, uh, there are some manual uh, review periodically, just starting an analytics program, or uh, you have been using a good predictive analytics for a while now, and you're used to it. Uh, let's just wait a couple of seconds for the answers and see how the audience is uh, used or not to uh, performance analytics. Okay, here we have the results, Zach. Yeah, this is good. I think this is pretty standard what we've been seeing through the other uh, areas we've presented in as well, within Europe and in the Americas. Very well, so no shock here. And uh, let's uh, launch a, a third and last poll question. Okay, and here, uh, well, a question on pricing: How do you value uh, how do you value advanced performance analytics as an additional part of O and M service fee? Is it from zero to fifteen cents per kilowatt, from fifteen cents to a dollar per kilowatt, or above the dollar mark? Okay, 
So Zach, is that within the the, the ranges we, we see in the market? Yeah, I think so. And I also think that initially the prices to value this would be lower until you really prove the value of getting more energy out of your plant and increasing your bottom line. As that goes on, maybe there might be a, a greater value of this services as well. Perfect. Shall we move on? Okay, we have your presentation back. Okay. So moving on, we're going to use our data to help us find existing issues and reduce future downtimes. Unfortunately, the techniques we've already talked about can be used to help us mitigate larger issues at the plant. So we generally see the value in taking care of something before it becomes more expensive to fix. However, it takes some initial investment to get to where you want to be, and we don't necessarily always want to pay to get there at the moment. The immediate solution to detect these larger issues of the plan is to put a performance engineer and have them look at the data at regular intervals. And usually they'll make some a recommendation to improve plant performance, but they also might not be able to spot the trends and anomalies at the time that could have major impact if addressed with, with no analytic structure in place. So through the appropriate use of performance analytics and automation, an analysis could run continually throughout the month and you could know immediately if a problem arises, what the performance engineer might not spot until they do their analysis on the regular interval, maybe a month or more in the future. With these advanced insights, we can recommend a course of action that might preempt a larger repair issue. Things like inverter filters and fans, if you're noticing some additional stray on those, those can be addressed preliminary by looking at the data points and fixing those, changing up filters or fixing the fans before a more expensive inverter failure happens. Building further on our analytics platform, the next step would be to optimize the maintenance schedules and to impact profitability. Any downtime on the plant must be managed to minimize revenue impact. Performance analytics can also help optimize maintenance scheduling for the greatest impact using history as a guide and employing forecasts and predictions. Preventive maintenance schedules typically are conducted on a calendar schedule for manufacturer's requirement to maintain warranty coverage. If you know that the summer months are coming and the stresses will increase on the inverter or other or inverters or other plant components, you could do a minor preventative maintenance cycle on only the fans and filters. That way we can ensure the inverters are ready to go for the higher production month ahead and ideally reduce downtimes when you're making the most money out of your plant. Major maintenances could also be delayed to a time when production will be least impacted. This could be during forecasted pre periods of site offline or curtailment, or even during lower production months of the winter time. Module cleaning also has a large impact on production, but can drive O&M costs up if performed at the wrong time or the wrong time of year. Using forecasting and advanced cleaning algorithms, you can place panel washings at the correct frequency and optimal time of the year for the greatest impact on production and help ensure that you get your return on investment for the cost of washing the panels. And finally, scheduling repairs can be done when positive impact is maximized versus the cost or loss, losses being incurred of the plant component being offline. The residential market is really good at maximizing the value of truck rolls by waiting on repairs until there are enough to be completed concurrently. The strategy might not work the same in a utility scale application, but similar principles can be followed. Good data analytics are going to reveal true areas of the plant that need attention right away and then help determine the repair when the cost of repair on the investment of a truck will roll will neutralize each other. In closing, it's a foregone conclusion that improving plant yield and driving down costs in PV is going to require substantial focus on data management your own program. Manual review of data is insufficient for dealing with larger volumes of data that come by scaling your portfolio. And that's why SMA is making a potential investment in research and resources to greatly improve our analytics 
and provide next generation solutions. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Zach. Thanks, Ben. Uh, we still have around five minutes for, for a couple of questions. If you still haven't uh, put your questions to us, please, you still have time. Uh, send it on the chat box uh, questions on your right. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's get on a first question then. Um, so yeah, in the in the early operations, what are the most uh, common problems that arise? So we're dealing with little operational data. Perhaps we're dealing with plant handover from the EPC guarantee. So how what are the most common problems here, and how does that change the the picture? Sorry, was this directed at someone in particular? Uh, yeah, uh, for, for yeah, SMA. I'll, yeah, I'll, just first off, I, I think uh, everyone had backed me up on this. Uh, one of the key things to get started on a plant is really to, to establish your communications infrastructure and your data continuity. Uh, I think, uh, you know, from smaller uh, commercial type plants all the way up to the big ones, it's really a probably one, one of your number one things to do and, and, and a place where you'll see a lot of errors is making sure that um, that your data is coming in properly, that it's accurate, that your sensors are positioned properly and, and things like that. And, and then really once that data is coming in, making sure everything's mapped properly and, and, and set up. I think that's the, your number one key. Obviously there's gonna be other things. Um, there's going to be some fine tuning with your inverter settings, but potentially, and a lot of that will get resolved during a good commissioning effort. Um, sometimes there's construction errors that are found uh, once you get started. But again, uh, overall, I, I really feel like the most critical piece is that monitoring and, and communications platform to get set up and, and resolve any issues you might see there. Very complete answer, uh, Ben. Thank, thanks for that. Uh, we, we have a, a question for, for Meteo Control in, in terms of best practices on how to integrate, uh, on how to optimize this integration with uh, the O&M service provider. Alex, are, are you yeah, able to yeah. hear us? Yes, yes. Um, so the, the the platform, uh, what we are providing is, is uh, basically a main tool uh, for the o &M, uh, server provider. So he's uh, doing all his work there. And then he's able to share this information with uh, uh, asset manager, the, the, the owner, uh, the investor. Um, so it's it's all an in integrated uh, solution for the different parts um, that are um, interested in the performance of the plan. If Perfect. I can add to that a little bit, yep. if you don't mind, this is such an important topic, uh, especially, you know, on a new plant, definitely you want as much lead time as possible to bring in your own M provider. Um, to to be involved as the plant's being finished and to um, be really involved with wh whoever's providing the data or the monitoring platform if it's separate from what the o &M provider uses. Make sure things are coordinated, but even, even kind of more important than that is uh, sometimes o &M providers are switched um, after the plant's been operating for a while, and I think it's a really good uh, principle to try and follow is to make sure that there's enough lead time uh, for that provider to be able to connect with the, the data provider or whatever the plant solution is and and really get things mapped out ahead of time rather than you know kind of throwing the the responsibility on them right from you know from day one but really have enough time to communicate and map things out and, and work together to, to get things set up upon the transition yeah so here a clear point that indeed these uh, synergies between the data solution provider and the O&M service provider need to be in place for a, for a smooth uh, well data interpretation and action uh, so very very good very important point here um, before we round up and so this is this is a question for for both of you 
and uh, and perhaps we can we can start with uh, with you Ben and Zach. Uh, so in uh, in in these conditions that that we see in uh, in Mexico and the re and in the region uh, with low labor costs and low margins, so digitalization has been facing quite uh, a slower penetration. How can we advocate also to the people that are hearing us for predictive maintenance? This is Zach. I think that by using digitalization and making sure you use, use your data to the best potential it, you have, it can really reduce the number of hours that you might need to work on site. And especially for the low margins, you know, it can really help improve your bottom line by making sure your plant output is maximized and reducing maybe maintenances that may not be necessary if you're doing. Yeah, just on, on that too is, you know, labor costs might be significantly lower in some cases, but they're not always, right? And that depends on where the plant is located. Um, it, you know, in Mexico is a great example. You've got a, a wide variety of different labor rates depending on where it's at in the country. Um, but regardless of that, kind of what Zach was getting at is you can still drive down labor costs, which are still a significant part of your your O and M expenses, if you can utilize data better to help maximize and, and optimize your um, your maintenance schedules, but also you know get ahead of uh, corrective maintenance before it becomes a, a larger issue. Yeah, <clears throat> I'd like to add it's not it's not uh, only about uh, the, the labor cost, uh, but if you have um, the plant availability uh, and uh, so you really want to uh, minimize downtimes, and no matter how how uh, cheap labor could be, um, you have to have a uh, good uh, idea of what's going on with your plant, and um, so you can uh, actually um, have an, an optimal level of the production of the plant. Perfect, gentlemen, thank you very much. We need to round off our webinar. We're just uh, on time. Thanks a lot also for our attendees, for their inputs and participation. I hope the webinar was valuable to you. If you have any questions or remark, my contact details will show up on, uh, on screen. Also, uh, feel free to, to contact the speakers of today. Uh, we will discuss this, uh, this topic and many more on O&M and asset management later in a couple of weeks in Mexico. So we hope to meet you there in Mexico City or just a couple of weeks later in Milan. Thank you very much and wishing you a nice day or nice evening, depending on when you are. Goodbye. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Adios. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.